titled Reimagining Zero and Infinity. In order to further describe this entangled quantum force and show that it is a, that it is a quantum of consciousness built on an assembly of entangled perspectives, we must first reaffirm our basic understanding of being. Where did existence come from? How does something come from nothing? This seems to be an eternal debate, but it truly needn't be. In order to see why, we must first challenge some of our most basic understanding of algebra and math in general. From the beginning of our scholastic mathematical education, we are taught that zero is equal to nothing. This means that zero is equal to non-existence. This is impossible because non-existence doesn't exist, and no number can represent that which doesn't exist. It doesn't even make sense for zero to be a placeholder for non-existence in mathematics, as non-existence is no place, so it cannot even have a symbolic placeholder represented by a number. Even if it could, it would be useless since multiplying, dividing, subtracting, adding, squaring, or applying any other type of calculation to any number by nothing is a non-action, and so the value of any calculation by something by non-existence or nothing is non-existent aka a non-calculation, and mathematics is the calculation of the value of actions of quantized existence. If zero cannot have a value of nothing, then what is the true value of zero? The true value of zero can be seen when we sum all possible numbers. When we sum all possible positive and negative numbers that could exist, the sum will always be equal to zero. This means that zero does not equal nothing, it instead means that zero is equal to everything. Therefore, the true value of zero is equal to infinity. Given the assumption that zero is equal to infinity, if we now try and divide something by zero, it is no longer an impossible non-action, despite what your calculator will still tell you. Now that zero is equal to infinity, dividing any number by zero is now an infinite division of that which is being divided and therefore an infinite action. That means that anything divided by zero is equal to infinity. The only exception to this is zero divided by zero, aka infinity divided by infinity, which equals one. Infinity is a number that encompasses all that exists, zero, all that has existed, negative numbers, and all that will exist, positive numbers. Zero represents all past, present, and future states of existence, and even with this apparent endlessness, existence has a seemingly almost unique quality that is that it has inherent and complete oneness. This is simply because existence encompasses all that exists and therefore inherently is separate from and excluding of that which is non-existent. This is due to the fact that anything which is non-existent simply cannot exist and therefore does not exist. The only other thing that objectively has inherent oneness without an outside observer to perceive the oneness of an entity is a consciousness. Since zero is equal to infinity and existence is inherently one, it stands to reason that we can also set the value of zero not only to equal infinity, but also as equal to one. This idea seems paradoxical when we apply it to something that we are familiar with within existence, but the conceptualization of infinity is not something we are even capable of, of observing in anything we are familiar with. While this idea may seem like a paradox, it actually is not. In fact, this idea makes perfect philosophical sense when considering the properties of a quantized existence. This idea of infinite oneness fits even more perfectly when applied in regard to the assertion of this paper, which is that existence is a single quantum of consciousness composed of an assembly of fundamental perspectives that are simultaneously the creator slash animator of and the creation slash animation of each other. This binary singularity is locked in a singular yet endless loop. This is because a perspective requires a conscious perceiver and a conscious perceiver must have multiple entangled perspectives to perceive and be conscious of, but more on that later. This new perspective doesn't just invalidate the argument that you can get something from nothing, it invalidates the entire debate. This entire discussion throughout the millennia has been moot since the argument itself is wrong. The question should not have been how could something have come from nothing, the question should have instead been can nothingness even exist at all, and no it can't. What this renewed understanding of the nature and structure of existence tells us is that nothingness doesn't exist. Nothingness has never existed, and nothingness will never exist. It also tells us, due to the inherent nature of existence itself, that not only does existence exist in the present, but it always has existed, and it always will exist. Existence objectively exists in an ever-present and eternal state. We will examine this further when describing the nature of space-time later on. Given that zero is equal to infinity, and that the entirety of existence is inherently one, if it is a consciousness, 
The six equations to describe the most fundamental nature of existence are as follows. Anything divided by 1 is equal to itself. Anything times 1 is equal to itself. Anything divided by itself is equal to 1. 1 times 1 is equal to 1. Anything except 0 divided by 0 is equal to infinity. And anything times 0 is equal to infinity. Notice that these fundamental equations break down to a binary triality, aka three sets of two or two sets of three. This is consistent with the universal source code that this paper will describe that appears to occur in all aspects of existence and all fields of study. All of the above considered, it can be deduced that the value of the totality of all that is, all that was, and all that will be in existence is expressed as existence is equal to infinity or one is equal to zero. What we can see is that 1 is equal to 0 encompasses the inherent oneness and infinite potential of existence itself. A point is often thought of as a zero-dimensional shape, but given the above, we now know that a zero-dimensional shape is really an infinite-dimensional shape. Now that the concept that existence is simultaneously equal to infinity, 1 and itself has been mathematically described, we can use this renewed understanding of the mathematical nature of existence as a cornerstone from which to construct a model of the process and structure of the universe the multiplicity we see within it, and the infinite singularity that gave rise to it.